A very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for joining our Homeopathy 24-7 podcast. We are going to be speaking to an array of international guests who will share their knowledge and experiences of homeopathy with you. We will discuss all types of subjects such as remedies, symptoms and stories of health. No matter where you are with your homeopathic journey, we aim to inspire you on your quest to natural health and living. The podcast is brought to you by Mary Greensmith, the founder of Homeopathy 24-7, which is a global platform connecting you with a homeopath wherever you are in the world, 24 hours a day. So let's get started with today's chat. Please welcome Mary Greensmith. Hello, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so pleased to welcome Heather Smith again. Thank you, Mary. And we are going to talk about bioresonance. Yeah, really. indeed. So I've been using bioresonance for about five years now and don't know what it is. It works on the understanding that everything in the universe vibrates to a different electronic frequency. And I program into the machine the person's personal details and then there's pre-programmed information in the device and it connects it makes an energetic connection with the person and then it introduces different um, potential stress factors into the person's energetic field and it sees how the person reacts to these different things and there's about there's over 15,000 different possible stress um, reactors within the, the program. So it introduces them to the person. And then we see what happens to the person when they're shown these different frequencies. And then so, that gives them an idea of what someone's reacting to. Okay. Th this is this is quite complex, Heather. <laughs> we need to go back a step. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell, tell me what it is it's a machine yeah do you plug yeah. it in it's a machine which i attach to my computer okay and the software is in the computer and there's a ma machine separately and then it measures these stress factors when it's introduced to a person's energetic field okay so it's all okay. programmed into the machine okay so so sorry i just i just need to understand um bit before we carry on otherwise i will yep. be totally lost so yeah so why was it was it invented for this for yes. this area or yes. did it come from something else no it was invented specifically for this by william nelson is the the chap who invented it so he and knew that we could measure people's energetic force yes and yeah. get and understand if we could understand the energetic force of somebody even if they're not there yeah that's right yeah then we could program a machine that's going to come out with lots yeah. of answers yeah and he spent about 30 years researching how to get to this place that we're at now what was and his background was he he was a quantum physicist as far as i'm aware okay a researcher, a researcher in the field of bioenergetic and bioresponse medicine so that yeah. is his specialist field, this bioresponse medicine where you use these bioenergetic frequencies to attach to the person and then see what they're reacting to. It, okay. It's so amazing. And it, I, I know, I know, Heather, because <laughs> you've done it for me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's just amazing. And because I was a little bit skeptical, I also had it done yeah, by somebody else and they came up with the same, <laughs> same things. So that was what was so exciting for me. But what I need to understand is where it's come from and how did you find this? Where did you um, find out about this? When I was being treated for Lyme, the practitioner that I was seeing, she'd been trained at the um, College of Practical Homeopathy under Robert Davidson. And he was one of the front runners in the development of this, this technology. Okay. So it was through him that it was really put into practice. And I went for Lyme treatment and she said, oh, I've got a bioresonance machine. I was like, oh, yeah, what's that? Yeah. 
And I also, like you, was very sceptical. And I said that to her and she said, oh, well, bring with me any, bring with you when you come for the appointment, any results of any tests you've had done. So I'd had blood tests done and I'd had a hair mineral test done as well. And I took them with me and everything that had come up in the blood tests and the hair mineral analysis also came up in the, the bioresonance scan. But the bioresonance scan is just next level. And as yeah. I said, there's over 15,000 different things in there yeah. that, you know, some of them I haven't heard of. I've been using it for five years and, you know, had no idea still what's in there. So yeah. recently, I'll give you a, a, an example. Recently, I had somebody come to me, they're um, a parent of a teenager, and they've just been told that they have um, chromosome disorders. So I said, right, okay, we can do a test and we can see, we can look at hormones, we can look at um, mineral vitamin deficiencies. And then I looked at chromosomes and I looked at all the different chromosome pairs. And I think I looked at about 30 different chromosome pairs. And it, the, the chromosomes that were coming up with a stress reaction, when I then subsequently went back to the parent and told them about it, it correlated with the symptoms that this, this teenager was having. And it was things like um, anemia and behavioral problems, um, mental health problems. Um, and those were the chromosomes that came up were the ones that directly correlated to the behavior. So the parent was able to say, right, okay, mm. I've seen this behavior. Now I know why this behavior is happening. Yeah. And it helps to give you a bit of perspective and a bit of understanding of why somebody is behaving in such a way that they're behaving in. And then another example was my dog. So I can also test animals on the machine and my dog had an epileptic fit so I went to the to the vet with him and they said right okay you need to get him on epilepsy medication once you start giving him the medication though it's a lifelong thing you can't stop once you started using this particular medication so I didn't feel terribly comfortable about that so I ran a bioresonance scan and it came up that he didn't have epilepsy he had basal ganglia disorder so the symptoms are the same as if you're having epileptic fits, but instead of having one epileptic fit, you have cluster fits. And so it gave me clues as to how I can treat it homeopathically. Mm. And once I started treating him homeopathically, he didn't have another fit mm. after that. Mm. And it's just, it's just incredible. And I can test for things like, I can test for allergies, I can test for... Um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies I can test the hormone balance um, I've got a little list here of things that I can test um, toxins hormones enzymes amino acids organ imbalances it does a spinal check it looks at, at blood and the reason really that I use this machine is for working with clients with Lyme particularly I can look at what was going on in the bioresonance because often you don't get a positive test result. You often don't get positive serology with Lyme. So I can look at the machine. I can say, right, okay, they've tested positive for Lyme. They've got the Babesia that's coming up. They've got Bartonella that's coming up. And the thing that I like most of all about this machine, which is why I chose this one over and above any other bioresonance machine, is that it's got an automatic cutout. So it also does treatments. I can do treatments on it as well. But if the recipient, they can't assimilate the treatment that I'm giving, the machine cuts out automatically, which other machines don't do that. And for me, it's absolutely vital that I know that the person on the receiving end, even though they're not in my room, mm. and potentially even more important if they're not here with me, mm. that I know that what I'm doing here, the treatment that I'm giving them, is going to be well received mm. Mm. and you know as i said with you know with clients who have got underlying things that you don't see when you come in for a homeopathic consultation you might not necessarily see that they've got 
you know hormone imbalances or they've got mold toxicity or mm. you know a, a, a calcium deficiency or you know any of these things i can look underneath yeah and of course it's so so important because we're talking to so many people and and yeah. you don't know whether you've got mold behind the walls we can tell yeah. from the symptoms that mm, there might be mold here mm, i've just moved into this house i can't see any mold yeah. that's not the point yeah. there's mold often you know behind the first layer of the wall yeah. um yeah. and of course we've got allergies we've got atmospheric things going on we've yeah. got things that we've been exposed to that have affected us hugely yeah. but we we don't just don't know what it is yeah and definitely all the things like you know emf exposure x-ray exposure and it can it can detect a stress reaction to things like x-rays if you've had x-rays recently whether they're out of the system properly or not it's just it's just incredible really and 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 you 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 mentioned it just briefly the fact yeah. that the client doesn't have to be there with you yes yeah, so i've perfected this now that beforehand it started off i was seeing people in person yeah and then i was doing because i was having quite a lot of people who couldn't come to my office so i started using a saliva sample yeah and then when um the coronavirus the pandemic was going on I couldn't ask people to mail saliva to me anymore. So I had to devise some way that I could still use the machine in, for somebody in America or Canada or wherever they might be. And when I first set the machine up for a new, new client, it calibrates to the person. And it has to have over an 85% calibration for the test to be accurate. And I was finding before that I was generally getting 87 up to 90% calibration. And I did a test the other day for someone. I had a 99% calibration. And I find that I'm getting a better calibration doing it remotely mm. than I ever have done before. This it's is just, so exciting. It, it, it's, it's it, so is. <laughs> yeah. it is so exciting yeah. because it is so easy. Yeah. Um. I, but it is time consuming for you, isn't it? You have to you have to be there and you have to run various tests and then you have to yeah. analyze it all and then you have to yeah. explain it to the client. Yeah. So it's very time consuming for you. Yeah. Um, but it's great as well. It's like being a, a detective yes. where I'll do the scan. And when I'm doing the scan, I've got certain information. So I, I send a form for the for the person to fill in and I've got little bits of information and I repertorize. So I'll think, right, OK, what rubric can I look up? And I look up symptoms in my repertory and then I find remedies that might match the person. And I might look at organ support remedies. I always test the big miasmatic remedies every time I run a test, mm -hmm. which will give me an idea of any inherited susceptibility. And I can test these remedies. I always do it at the end of the test and I test the remedies and not only the remedy, but the potency. And it will tell me which remedy and potency is a good match for the person okay okay so so just let's talk for a moment about energy medicine homeopathy energy yeah. reporting bioresonance yeah. scan oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Where, yeah how do these connect what 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 is it i mean obviously it's brilliant for a homeopath because suddenly yes. we've got a testing mechanism yeah. that we can um, use in order to, 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 to find, you know, the right remedy and to, to find things when we're getting stuck. Yeah. Um, yes. But um, <clears throat> homeopathy is an energy medicine and this is an energy diagnosis. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I can't say that it's a diagnosis. I'm not allowed okay. to say that. No. But what I can say that it, it detects stress responses in a person in reaction as a reaction to a named substance and okay. you know where, where you know that might be lime or it might be emf radiation or it might be you know an allergen it might be dairy it might be mold so it tests the stress reaction when they're exposed to that energetically mm -hmm. Is this test reaction a bit like kinesiology? I think it's quite different to kinesiology because 
the Kinesi, and I spoke to somebody recently about kinesiology mm. and how does the kinesiology compare to doing the bioresonance. And she said to me that kinesiology is very dependent on the practitioner and dependent on the practitioner's knowledge of, you know, clinical pathology or the person or, you know, what to look for. What do I need to look for in this person to yeah. do the testing? Whereas with this, it's nothing to do with me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm the innocent bystander yeah. and the machine tests everything all the way through. And so my potential bias doesn't come into play here. Okay. That okay. makes sense. Uh, it does. I would argue that you do have, obviously, the, the knowledge of the pathology in order to ask the right questions and, and yeah. run the right reports. Um, yeah. And obviously, that's what you're researching more and more, because if it's telling you something, you go away and you study it, because I know yeah. you, and you, yeah. <laughs> you're, you've always got your head in a book. Um, oh, yeah. So but it does the testing automatically. It does I the don't, testing I don't necessarily, yes. So okay. it tests everything. So if I do a test, if yeah. I do a test for you yeah. and I do a test for me, yeah. it shows us both exactly the same things. Okay. Yeah. And okay. then I go away and I look at what's come up in the machine and I go, oh, calcium's come up and yeah. sodium's come up. But it hasn't come up as a deficiency and it hasn't come up as too much. Does that mean that there's an imbalance between calcium and sodium? Does this person need more sodium in order for the calcium to be absorbed properly? Mm. That's where the, the, the investigation detection. comes in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, understanding how this um, can result in, in um, a, um, you helping people then get those balances right. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I've got a couple more, you know, instant instances here of yeah. cases that are reports that I've done for people. And I had okay. um, a young boy and their parents came to me. He'd been having epileptic fits. And through the machine, I was able to trace back that it was an inherited susceptibility, which had been switched on, basically, following a head injury and a grief. So the grief came up very, very high in the scan. So that told me that this person needs to look at grief above and before anything else. Mm -hmm. And then when I went back to the parent, they said, oh, yes, the, the grandmother died just before the epilepsy started. So then we know that we need to look at the grief. And, you know, it really links in so well with the homeopathy because we know so well the the influence that our emotions and traumas have on our presenting symptoms. Of course. Yeah. 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 So then um, I had another client who had Lyme and um, they were actually seeing a different practitioner came to me for a bioresonance scan and they weren't seeing any improvements at all. They'd come to a, a plateau and they were noticing that every time they took anything, they were having a worsening of symptoms. So I ran the test and it came up that they had leaky gut. And with some very simple measures put in place to treat the leaky gut, the symptom picture improved to the degree that they're pretty much fully functioning now. And I wouldn't have known as a homeopath, this person coming into my practice with Lyme, whether they had leaky gut or not without you know, testing. And this is, you know, this is what I use for the, for the testing. And mm. the other thing as well that I can look at is if there is this oversensitivity to homeopathic remedies, which you see a lot with Lyme, I can then test the remedies that are indicated for this oversensitivity to see which remedy I might be able to use with the client to help address this oversensitivity to remedies because obviously I can't treat anybody mm. if I can't give them homeopathy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's really, really interesting because of course I find as well that that oversensitive people are usually oversensitive to one or two remedies, not necessarily all of the remedies, but really bizarre remedies that you think, oh, that's surprising. Yeah. You're having that reaction with that remedy. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I can work with homeopaths 
Yes. You know, if they've got a client that's stuck and they don't know why. And quite early on, when I first started using the machine, I had a, a very interesting scan that I did for somebody who was referred to me from a homeopath. And again, the case had got stuck and they didn't know why. And I tested them and they had um, liver flukes. Oh. And um, the liver flukes were treated and, and they got better. It, it's Perfect. really incredible. Yeah, is, yeah. And that is the missing link that sometimes we suffer from as yeah. homeopathy, isn't it? We can we can just tell, okay, we've got this symptom, so we need to give this remedy, but quite yeah. often we don't know enough of that the reason, the cause of the symptom. Yeah. And you're you are giving us that opportunity to have a look at that because you'd never think, oh, I need to look at river fluke. Um, for yes, that. definitely. Yeah, yeah, and then some liver support remedies, and yes. then treat the presenting symptoms. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. It just runs so nicely, doesn't it? So let's just yes. just um, discuss for a moment what we mean by a homeopath getting stuck, um, because obviously we talk about this all the time. So um, what we mean is that we've been working with a client um yeah. for some time and the remedies the well indicated remedies aren't working as we expect them to work yes and that's exactly it yes we, we we think okay now sometimes when this happens we know there are a certain number of remedies that we can give to help remedies work better yeah when we've exhausted that we kind of think oh goodness i don't know where do we go next yeah um so to have this is is really really lovely and of course yeah. um for me with with behavioral issues and and children um, and allergies um quite often the remedies work for a while and then the symptoms return and yeah. we get stuck in the cycle of okay it'll work for a while but it's not holding why isn't it holding and that's where your analysis is so useful because okay we've got this going on we just need to give a remedy to to clear the toxins in the liver or the gallbladder or, or whatever yeah. it is that's causing this um that phenomenon where the remedies aren't working and holding yeah and it is a very in-depth you know and when I, I do a report so i send out a form first of all and then i do the scan and then i email a report and it's normally I think it's quite in depth. Would you say that it's quite in depth, Mary? Yes, yes, um, yeah. it, it is. It you know, and and that doesn't hold everything, does it? That's just the bits that have come out that, yeah. that need to talk yeah. about. Um, um, it's it's lovely. So what I've done with mine, I've just taken off my results, and and so I can show people what the the likely things are that are going to come up. Um, because people do want to know, well, what is different about this scan than other scans that they're going to have or they have had? Um, I think the beauty of it is that we're not only looking at, you know, pathology and toxins and allergies and all these other things, but we're also looking at emotional things that come up as well. So, you know, like with the, the, the child that I was talking about before having the epilepsy that had started after grief, all the way through the scan, mm. grief came up. So, you know, we can look for those kind of things as well. And I had one recently that had sadness coming up all the way through the scan. And, you know, this, I think, is important when we're working as homeopaths. So we're not only looking at the, you know, the, the science and the pathology side. Mm -hmm. But we're also looking at what what else is going on with this patient. Mm, mm. Yeah. It, it, it is so in depth. It's it's just such an eye opener. It is so exciting, yeah. and I know that you're going to have a lot of questions, Heather. So I am going to put your website and your contact details um, underneath okay. um, okay. With, with the details yeah. so that people can contact you but um just to be explaining it might be worthwhile you know having a, a, a template of the types of things that the report is going to come back to and usually yeah. then they'd have an appointment with you and just talk through um yes. different elements of that and what so after they've had, from there 
Yeah. So after they've had their report, I then do a, a Zoom conversation with the person to just go through and show where, why is that linked up with that? Why has sugar regulation come up and the pancreas? Just do you see what I mean? Just to show why things are coming up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why have these mineral deficiencies come up? Oh, it's because there's, I don't know, Bartonella. So we can link all these things together. And I explain that and go through the report yeah. th through what has come up for the person. And then there's suggestions as well. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank talking you, us through this, Heather. Um, yeah. I, I think it's, it's such a brilliant tool that um, yeah, we've really got is. in in our toolbox, isn't it? To help yeah. people, to help everybody listening, um, just help get to the bottom of why yeah. they're reacting emotionally and physically to the world around yeah. them. Yeah. And the other thing that I can I do on it as well is that there's certain – there's pre-programmed treatments on there as well so i can do and there's a lime specific one there's one for candida there's one for allergies and there's an emotions one and every time i do a scan i always do one it's called feel good and you know i've done it done it on myself and i think afterwards oh, i do actually feel a bit better so i always do that as well that's also part of the part of the scan the treatment a few treatments as well yeah that's amazing. I think that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> the feel the good side of it. I think we'd like to hear more about that, wouldn't we? Um, about what's happening there. Heather, yeah. thank you so much for coming to talk to us thank about you, this. Mary. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Speak to you soon. Take care. Thank you so much, Heather, for going through the details about the bioresonance machine. It is so important that we understand more and more about energy medicine and how it's going to be helping us keep healthy in the future. Next week, we are going to be talking to Kirsty Richards about pregnancy and prolapse. It's really important that everybody understands that homeopathy has got such a brilliant reputation helping people through all stages of pregnancy. It is such a safe medicine to be working with while you're pregnant and, of course, for newborn babies as well. So next week, Kirsty Richards, I look forward to seeing you there. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and look forward to listening to our next one. Please don't forget to follow our podcast on your chosen channel and please do leave us a review so we can continue to share homeopathy with as many people as possible. If you do have any questions, please do reach out to us on any of our social platforms mentioned in the show notes. We at Homeopathy 24-7 hope to empower you on your natural health journey.